Today, you will meet someone who uses comedy, drama, suspense, and vivid storytelling through the fascinating medium of puppetry. Today's guest will show us the technical and storytelling side of puppetry and how some subject matters are for adults and how they're communicated through her puppets and characters. Hi, I'm Michael Perea. For many of us while growing up, puppets were strictly a children's medium. Such names as Sherry Lewis and Landshop, Kukla, Fran and Ollie, and of course Sesame Street come to mind. I'd like for you to meet our guest today, Shoshana Yari. Hi. How are you? Good. And I see we have some extra company as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> My name is Grandma Rose. And what did, your, what did you say your name was? Michael. Oh, Michael, right. How are you, Michael? How are you today, Grandma? Very good, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Now, Shoshana, tell us, how did you get into puppetry? Um, I did, uh, in college, I uh, took a BA in psychology, and when I finished my, uh, my BA, I knew that that's really not what I want to do. I, I did love theater back then, so I went to do psychodrama, and I just happened to bump into some classes in puppetry. I loved it so much that I decided this is what I want to do. Hey, that's cool. And uh, could you talk about the different forms of puppetry, the different types of forms of puppetry? Well, there are so many different kinds of puppetry. Oh, yeah? The most traditional ones are the marionettes, puppets on strings, right. and uh, hand puppets, uh, rod puppets, and recently uh, Jim Henson developed the Muppet-style puppets, and then we have shadow puppets from China. Right, right. So many different, so many different kinds. Okay. And um, I know that in this upcoming clip, uh, you're going to explain and show us the process of how you craft some of your uh, characters. Mm -hmm, that's true. You're going to see this, yeah. So now, uh, currently I'm working on a show that is based on a story written by an Israeli author. It's called Granny Needs. It's about a grandmother who has this magical ability to... Uh, create things by knitting them and to give to bring them to life she she needs herself a house and flowers and gardens and grandchildren and when the grandchildren are not accepted in school she fights for them because they're different of course she fights for them and she goes all the way till the end to make sure that they they will be accepted into the society so um the puppet of the grandma this is the final product the way i made her is I started with clay, I sculpted her with clay, and then I, I created a mold with this silicone, which it comes as a liquid, you combine two materials together, and um, when it dries, it, it's, it hardens, and inside, you actually get the mold of that head. When you done, when this dries, you demold it by opening it and taking out the, the clay and you close it again, make sure that it's all tight. You pour another material inside, another kind of plastic, and you rotate it. You rotate it constantly until it dries and this way you get the final product, you get a hollow. And it's only the skin of that plastic that um, that gets the shape at the mold and inside it's just hollow and light it's very important that the the puppet will be light this is the the head i had to do it a couple of times because it's a material that was new to me so the first the first trial was a bit too heavy i waited too long um, with the material and it dried and there was too much of it inside the second time was much better, much lighter, and I was pleased. And then, of course, I added all the, the accessories, like the hair and the, and the glasses. And actually, the, the character of the grandma is inspired by Jane Hansen. 
I was inspired by her to create this character by Jen Hansen's personality. She was Jim Hansen's uh, wife. She passed away a couple of months ago, and um, the, her personality, her look, are the the things that inspired me when I, uh, as I'm working on the on the that puppet of the grandma. The body of the grandma is also also has to be light, and I'm using this foam that is covered by a few layers of paper mache to, to give it strength. Um, the knitted child is going to be a marionette and the eyes are, um, right now I'm focused on the eyes, um, I don't exactly know but I'm gonna, you know, the eyes I feel are important. He has to be a real boy so she, because she fights for him to be accepted into the society, and at the same time, he has to look like not a real boy to to justify the the teacher's decision not to take him to school. So I'm in between the, the, that that um, the look that I'm looking for is in between a real boy and a not a real boy. It's it's uh, pretty challenging, but I of course I enjoy the challenge. Mainly for the entertainment of children. Oh no. It used to be like that years ago, but um, in recent years, you can see more and more uh, shows for adults, for grown-ups that are using oh, yeah? puppets, along with live actors or just puppets, yeah. Oh, wow. I, I had no idea. And tell us, what are uh, some of your major influences? I would say that the main, uh, the puppeteer that mainly influenced on me is uh, Eric Bass and his okay. wife, Ines Zeller. They're located in Vermont. They had a right. very strong influence on my work. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now take us behind the stage now for a few seconds and show us um, the characters that you manipulate and, and like how you manipulate them. Okay. So the clip you're going to see is the manipulation of shadow puppets. Okay. It's part of a show that it, it's a toy theater show, but one part is shadows. And if you see, if you look very carefully behind the scenes, you see the sticks that operate the different right. parts, they are placed in an angle, a 90 degree angle to the screen, so the shadow of the hands will not show on the screen. It's, it's a Chinese um, methods of manipulation shadow puppets. Okay. And it seems like the world of puppetry has actually evolved into heavier and a more, uh, more sensitive subjects. Uh, you recently saw a show about dementia. Please tell us about that. So I mentioned Eric Bass before, right. and uh, with his wife, they have uh, a theater called Sanglas Theater, and they did a show that's called G Generation D, and it deals with a topic that people rather not deal with it and stay in denial. That's the dementia. A, a lot of a lot of us in my generation, they see their parents. Um, you will maybe see your grandparents, and right. it's a pretty scary situation. People look at them and yeah, know that yeah. I may be there one day. So he was able to touch that topic in such a delicate, right, right. gentle uh, way to show that there is actually even joy. Of course. Um, at this uh, unfortunate disease. Of course. And uh, right now, I know that you're working on a project about abuse, and um, I would like for you to tell us and show us some of the scenery um, from it. Okay, so um, this is a show about uh, emotional neglect in the family and it okay. was, uh, I was inspired by it when I had to take a workshop for teachers to identify children that are emotionally abused. In this show, the mother is, um, she's depressed because of the relationship with her spouse and her little boy that may be four or five years old try to make her happy. Right. And she pushes away all his, efforts you know in the end he makes a picture for her and he gives it to her but right. she just doesn't take it and it's uh he cries himself to sleep and i find that this is a very interesting way to deal with such a heavy topic right right and it seems that hand puppetry leads itself to voice as well as hand movements mm -hmm. uh, tell us about those techniques so this is basically the Muppet style puppets that was developed by Jim Hansen. Okay. Um, in the late 60s, early 70s, a lot of puppeteers were very much attracted to it. These kind of puppets are perfect for TV. They have a big head. Wow. Okay. They have a mouth that can speak and yeah. it moves as they speak. Right. So uh, a lot of puppeteers like, like that methods of uh, operating puppets. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I know that not only 
they can talk, but they can sing, and I, I dare say sing. Yeah, you can see in the next uh, clip, you'll see a puppet singing Frank Sinatra okay. in front of the mirror, because that's how I practice my, uh, my uh, manipulation. Many times I have to practice in front of a mirror. Fly me to the moon and let me alone, I'm on the stars. Let me see how spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, 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 <laughs> Not much of a dancer myself. Oh, you're or fine. Or a singer. <laughs> you're fine, Michael. You're fine. All right. Today we got to meet a master puppeteer who truly conveys the complexities, emotions, and realities of this thing called life. This has been fascinating. Thank you so much, Shoshana, for being here today. And, of course, Grandma. I got to say, you are really cool to hang out with. Oh, that's a compliment. A big thank you to our crew for all of us in TV2. I'm Michael Perea, and thank you for watching today, and have a great day.